What's up, guys? Welcome back to the GSL Code S as we are starting day one of the round of 16. Yeah, this is such a ridiculous round of 16 that I don't feel like we can even like say anything to to hype it more than just reading off the names that, <laughs> yeah. that, that are playing, like yeah. TY and Alive and Stats and Biel play today. And surely at home, you're, Artosis, that must be the group of death. That's so sick. We get to start the group of death. But... Then I have to go, no, it's not the group of death, actually. This Saturday's group is even more ridiculous. Both Dark and Innovation in there. Like, both Dark and Innovation in there, okay, and also Sue can, and can also I Classic. Say, I love your O-mouth. Can you make the O-mouth? Can you show them the O-mouth? This is this. <laughs> I can't do it on command. Yeah. I have to. Oh, my God. <laughs> it, but, like. It's just these. It's so stupid how strong these first two groups are. We are very lucky. Fair. We are I, very lucky to have groups like this. But uh, what can you and expect? All man? it does, all it does, because I watch. I didn't watch the entire group selection. Yeah. Uh, but I watch enough that I just see. It just gives me more, uh, more respect for what used to be CJ, but now Root Hero, like. When, when they were picking, like, he made a group that actually he's just going to crush it and get out of it. And, like, everyone else is, like, picking hard players and, like, trying to be tough on camera. He's like, well, I want to win that $100 award for being cool. In the <laughs> and Hero's just sitting there. He's like, I'm going to go to the top eight. Okay, yeah. that's what I'm going to do. Well, I think the <laughs> round of 16 is always um, a lot harder to pick who's going to get on in the round of 32. Because sometimes round of 32, we're like, well, he should lose. Yeah, yeah. Everybody knows he should lose. I mean, anything could happen. Yeah. Um, and usually we do have the two guys that are probably going to move on. Occasionally they don't. But round of 16, um, I'm excited, man. Well, we, had, we had about oh. nine or ten days off or something like that. So it feels good to be back here. And we've got some maps we want to show you guys. Yeah. Abyssal Reef. By the way, um, our map lineup, I should say. Hold on a second, guys. We got updated right when we came in. Yeah. It's this not, is the map it's not lineup. The se this season's map pool exactly. Yeah. So we got Newkirk Precinct, Daybreak, Echo, Whirlwind, then Cactus Valley, Abyssal Reef, and Proxima Station. Yeah. So, uh, you know, unfortunately, we are missing out on, like, Paladino and, and Honor Grounds, and uh, there's another map. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, but... You know what, the maps that we got in, these are really cool maps. This is Abyssal Reef that we're showing you right now in case you haven't seen or played this map at all. Uh, it's wild. There are so many different paths and changes, like grass, changes of elevation all over the place. Um, and maybe the craziest part of it is that it makes, like it's really hard to even see things on it because it makes everything kind of blue. What he's drawn right now, this is somewhere you can that's, fly drop that, ships That's a stuff. baguette down there. Yeah. <laughs> and what's this over here? That's where Todd flies his warp prism to get into the main that's base. That's right. That's where Todd warps in on that Turrets baguette. and stuff don't reach from there. Nothing yeah. from the ground does. So you can hide things like liberators and stuff back there. Uh, anyways, it's the map, it's really cool, and, but it takes some getting used to to even see what's going on because it's like such a different color, which I think is really cool. It, it's super beautiful, too. There's like fish flying, swimming around and stuff because... I guess you're on the There's underwater. a big one on the map right now. That's a giant fish. Oh, my God. Imagine if Zerg could infest that fish the size of a map. The game <laughs> would be over. That's the space shark up above. You need two infestors with two neural parasites, yeah. one to get the brain in the front, one to get the brain closer to the tail. And then you put some and look down here. In there. There's a giant Dorito. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is Proxima, uh, not Abyssal. There you go, Proxima Station. A two-player map, but... You know what's kind of cool about this? It feels like a four-player map, taking out bad parts about a four-player map, like I not like being that. able to scout your opponent. Like, but it's so huge. You can play crazy macro games here. There's a lot of rocks that change the dynamics about how you can move around. Uh, and it really, this this season of maps, I'm super happy with. I have to say, uh, just overall, not necessarily GSL, but on the ladder, 
so many interesting things that they've done with the way that you can move around. You know, like, you have this pocket expansion, but there's rocks back there. There's a proxy location, maybe he'll show. What's that, 48? Is that, did you write 48, or is that like a, <laughs> I don't know what that is, but um, maybe it's four and then an infinity symbol, but on the wrong side. Maybe it's the Korean letter K sideways, and then also infinity sign below it. Could be. Because he's laughing about how long it takes for Zerglings to kill those rocks. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's there's some cool proxy locations. That little triangle he's drawn right there, you can sit like a Liberator or whatever, and nothing like a Stalker can't hit it or anything like that. Yeah, you, you can it. park uh, an air unit over there, even like a Warp Prism or something, yeah. run away, yeah. and, and, and it's going to be there for the time being. There's some maps where you can do that, some maps where you can't. Mm -hmm. Important to note. Yeah. Um, a little bit of history here. We actually had this big issue that happened in um, Brood War, where there was, this is like long ago, but where they had snow maps. Yeah. And they actually had to stop him because yeah. the screen was so white, it started to hurt the player's eyes. Yeah, and especially for Protoss, if you warp stuff in, it was crazy oh, what it a was snow bad. map would do. If oh, you, my God. You try to look at a pile and warp it in, you go blind. It was, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Abyssal Reef is kind of like this. It doesn't make it brighter. It kind of, like, makes everything slightly darker and, like, slightly bluish. So it it's really weird. Like, the first couple of games I played there, I had a really hard time. But, it, I mean, it's, it's a cool map. I'm excited to have it in the season. By the way, these are the groups, guys. So, as you can see, Group A and B, we talked about a little bit already. Very exciting. Group C, Hero, Trap, Lee Knock, and Ryung. And Group D will be SOS, Keen, Bunny, and Maru. Yeah. Dude, our round of eight is going to be sick. Yeah, no, the round of eight. Imagine imagine something like TY and Bill are st it doesn't. I, I just name all the names in the first two groups, Groups A and B. Sorry, I was sitting down. Tasis has a tummy ache. Uh, I, ha I, like actually, I actually have a really bad stomach ache today, guys, so I might not be at my A game. Yeah, but it's okay. Yeah. We well, have we have a rapid here, or he will be here soon. Yeah. So if I start to um, get too sick, he will he will come save I, me. I think that, uh, you know, speaking about what our round of eight will look like, I almost feel like we should do a vote and make it a round of 12. But anyways, I guess, I guess we got a video, guys. Uh, 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 그나마 제가 유리하다고 생각을 해가지고 오. 나중에 바꿀 수도 있죠. 예, 네, 바꿀 수 있어요. 네, 원하는 대로 조구석을 선택해서. 와. 원래는 황규석 선수를 오. 뽑을 생각이었어요. 근데 환, 환유석 선수가 이번에 IM 경기에서 너무 잘하는 것도 보고 음. 또 얘기를 하시니까 저도 한번 해보고 싶더라고요. 그래서 동생보다 형이 먼저 매 맞는 게 <웃음> 좋을 오. 것 같아서 네. 좀 도발 아닌 도발 했는데. <웃음> 좀 이성적으로 생각할 수 있는 너무 봐도 이제 태태전의 끝장전 한번 에이조에서 한번 하면 되는 거 아니에요? 저 태태전 안 좋아. 안 좋아해 주세요. 아 알겠습니다. 안 좋아하고 네. 안 뽑았으면 좋겠어요. 아 에이조는 싫어요. 태란전 싫어요. 저도 에 별로 태태전. 아 태태전 동족전 싫다. 에이조가 제일 갈만한 것 같아요. 항상 에이조가 꿀조더라고요. 그래서 나 뽑을래? 아니 뭐 고백하는 거예요? 고백하는 거예요. 나 뽑을래? 태태전 지금 웃어요. 한지원 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 가나요? 한지원 선수. 한지원 친하니까. 약간 손 내밀면? 아. 하지만 좀 어쩔 수 없다. 여기서 전태현 선수의 의중이 가장 중요하다. 상황이에요. 한
지원은 조합까지 깨졌기 때문에 이걸 막더라도 이길 수 있는 그림을 그리려면 네. 5분 정도는 필요한데 트리플이 깨지면 그 그림 빨리, 10분으로 빨리, 늘어납니다 여기 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 빨간 불 들어왔어요 지금 저 몸체 길어 깨지네 근데 이 상황을 느껴야 돼요 옥장이 네. 없는데 왜 쌍꺼 변변해서 가니까 그렇죠 유시하죠 그래서 우리가 이상하다 찾았다 이거 깨지면 안지원 선수 열도시 시키는 대로 경기 끝납니다 게임을 끝낼 수 있는 순식간 한 방이 없잖아요 근데 이제 이미 한전 선수의 아... 병력을 절반으로 나눠도 제재! 제재! 한전 선수 그 위기를 겪었습니다만 끝까지 포기하지 않으면서 승리를 만들어냈습니다 영영을 한번 내려도 돼요 왜냐면 권한이 있기 때문에 어 일단 솔직히 태태전은 하기 싫고 쇼그전이나 프로토스 김대엽 선수나 어윤수를 안 데려오면 은 한지원 선수, 선수를 비조로 보내겠습니다 와! <웃음> 이야 <웃음> 이게 권력입니다 어, 괜한 실수 친구 잃지 말자 <웃음> 하식사 한잔 마시고 있어요 지금 여보세요 아 근데 투테란 뽑으면 진짜 그 제가 비디오로 확실히 가는 건지 알고 싶네요 어그 믿음 오 투테란 뽑으면요 100%도 한 200%입니다 <웃음> 200%입니다 <웃음> 됩니다. 해당 선이 계속해서 본인 쪽을 보는 게 아니라 이쪽에다가 어, 앞쪽 면 들어갔다 앞쪽 면 앞쪽 면 앞쪽 면 들어갔다 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 앞쪽 그때 우리가 만났을 때 얘기했던 것대로 된것 같고 음. 이제 어... 한 명만 보내면 되겠다 아... <웃음> 뭔가 미략이 있었네요 예, 미략이 있었고 마이크 한번 던져주세요 근데 전태형 선수는 말잘안 들어줄 것 같은데요 야, 모르는 듯한 얼굴 어. 표정이죠? 아니 그때 같이 술을 마셨는데 제 네. 술이 약해가지고 기억이 안 나요? 기억이 안 납니다 진짜로 <웃음> 진짜로 기억이 안 나가지고 네. 무슨 얘기를 하는지 지금 모르겠어요 아, 지금 무슨 얘기 전혀 모르겠어요 아 예, 진짜로 어. 네. 김대엽 선수의 표정이 굳었어요 김대엽 선수가 <웃음> 술이 내려갔습니다 It's time for the interview now. We're going to see what their thoughts are before we go into this uh, game one here. I did enjoy that uh, pre-interview though. That was yeah, a lot of fun. That was fun. <laughs> it's kind of, some interesting graphics stuff too. Yeah. So this is group A made by TY who had the top seed. So after IEM stats, I uh, joined Group A as well. Um, 네, let, hello, TY. Yeah, you had an interesting idea on how to make this group. Do you have any regrets? 괜찮았었는데 지나고 나니까 네. 저희 조 선수들이 각각 각 종족별로 세 손가락 안에 드는 선수들이어가지고 약간 어 굉장히 떨어질 것 같은 생각을 많이 했어요. 그래서 had, 어, 떨어질 uh, a lot of different strengths. 것 같아서 나름대로는 열심히 준비를 했습니다. I think I have a high chance to be eliminated from this group. I, uh, throughout this whole week, I'm gonna have to practice a lot. Or just keep taking some some audio props. Go ahead. 막강한 선수들로 채워 넣으셨거든요. 네. 네. So the top seeded players always use the cards for their benefits. But you didn't end up doing that. 네, 딱히 없었고 네. 일단 CD 조 선수들이 좀 많이 도움을 줬어요. 제가 도움을 많이 줬으니까. 네. CD 조 선수들이 도움을 많이 줘서 정말 네. 열심히 연습할 수 있었던 것 같아요. 네, 어, 기억이 난게 인터뷰에서 술 자리에서 기억이 안 나서 그런 기억이 안 나시는 거예요? 네, 네, 기억이 사실 기억력이 안 좋아가지고. 네. But you said you didn't remember what you talked about. Was that true? 네, 그렇군요. 자, 그럼 나머지 선수분들의 컨셉도 들어보겠습니다. 조금 더 피쉬였죠. 먼저 한때 그래도 한동안 한 솥밥을 먹었던 김대엽 선수부터 저는 궁금하거든요. 그때 전태하 선수의 큰 그림에 대해서 평을 하자면. Let's see uh, what stats has to say. Used to be a family with TY in the past, being on KT with them. 
빵점짜리 조준영승이었던 것 같아요. 네, 근데 I think for TUI that was a 10 out of 10 nomination. And for me, it was a 0 out of 10. 차라리 좀 A조를 이렇게 좀 바꿔 볼줄 알았는데 네. 왜냐면 태양이도 좀 쉽게 이렇게 팔가능하니까 I felt like TY used uh, his cards to for group A. <웃음> 그랬군요. 자, 한희석 선수 And I didn't expect that he was making a tough group. 듣고 계셨어요. 그날 MVP도 되셨거든요. 네. 네, 그때 한희석 선수의 느낌 전태현 선수의 큰 그림은 어땠나요? You were the MVP in group nominations live. 전태현 선수한테는 큰 그림이지만 저한테는 매우 엉망인 그림이었고요. 아 그래요? 뭐 물론 제가 먼저 어떻게 하셨잖아요. 제가 어떻게 For me, it was really the worst choice. It was kind of all for TY. 그러니까 결과론적이지만 제가 디조나 시조 봤으면은 걱정 없이 게임했겠지만 지금 좀 많이 걱정이 되고요. If I join Group C or D, I think it would be pretty doable. But since I'm Group A, it's it's really a high chance to be eliminated. 알겠습니다. With these circumstances, I practiced a lot, knowing that this was going to be very, very hard. How do you like TY's big picture of this group, Bill? 네. 그때 후회를 많이 했어요. 아 그래요? 조준영 씨기나 뭐 평소에 yeah, I kind of had a lot of regret about it. 스타일이시기 때문에 실력에 비해 많이 겸손하신 게 아니신가 생각을 해 왔어요. You were very quiet. 그날 이후에 후회를 하셨다는 얘기죠. You're very humble as well. 그날 이후에 이제 신맵이 나왔거든요. 네. 신맵으로 연습을 많이 했어요. Well, after the nomination, the new maps came up. 네. 확실히 신맵이란 변수가 좀 크네요. And I think these maps are terrible for Zone. 되게 많이 했고. 네. So I'm very worried. I don't know what the result will be. 특히나 김대엽 선수와 한지원 선수는 최근에 또 높은 곳에서 만난 적이 있기 때문에 그 이후에 제외하는 거거든요. 두 선수 오늘 준비는 잘 하신 것 같아요. 서로에 대한 준비는 어떠 어떠셨는지. Have you prepared well? 많이 했고. Since you have to play against him again. 준비력이 잘 나왔습니다. 네. 어, 상대가 연구를 많이 하고 오셨대요. I think I prepared as well as I can. 어, 저는 연구를 안 했어요. 어, 그럼요? Bill practiced well to play against you. Now, uh, what about you for him? It's like, no, I didn't really practice for, for the match against Bill very much. I've never heard that before. Yeah. I just practice as I normally do. Nothing too specific. Let's see what the results are going to be for tonight. What are your finals words for the matches tonight? I've emptied my mind today. It always works. Even if I'm eliminated from the group tonight, I just really hope that my fans enjoy my performance in tonight's matches. Only if you win stats. Speaking of stats, what about you, Alive? What do you want to say? 뽑아서 미안한 이유는 지연이가 또 떨어질까 봐 그런 생각 했던 거고요. To pick Bill here, since he's a close friend of mine. 선수 두명 있어서 친한 친구끼리는 아마 오늘 He has a high chance being eliminated here. It's a good thing to say about your friend. Like, oh, I'm so sorry for bringing you taste. You're gonna die. I hope that one of us makes it to the next round. 32 강에 경기력이 많이 안 좋아서. 걱정하시는 분들이 많더라고요. 제 오프라인 경기 때좀 이상한. My performance in the round of 32 was not very good, and I'm not very satisfied. My fans are worried about it as well. 좀한 편이고 연습하면서. But my condition is really good tonight, and I think I'll play well. 네. 어 긴장. For the past week, I practiced a whole lot. And that gives me a lot of confidence going into tonight. 기대를 해보겠습니다. 자 먼저 한지원 선수 일단 들어볼게 이제 가장 마지막에 들어야죠. 자 한지원 선수 오늘 또 떨어질 것 같아서 미안해하시는 분도 있고 그런데 한지원 선수는 자신감 어떠신지 각오 들어볼게요. Life said he's sorry that you might get eliminated tonight. 처음에 저 나왔을 때는. Are you confident? 
제가 올라가겠다고 생각했었는데 최근에 연습을 해보니까 너무 힘들더라고요. Recently, 그래서 I practiced with those new maps. And that really reduced my confidence. I don't think it'll be easy match tonight at all. This match, 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 but if I get eliminated in the round of 16, then that'll be humiliating. So I'll just have to do my best to make it to the next round. Basically, he wants to eliminate a lot of hard opponents now so he can just win the tournament. <laughs> All right, guys, that does it. Artosis, thanks for taking care of that. I was having a hard time with my uh, yeah. headset there uh, hearing anything. Thanks for saving my bacon. Yeah. Thanks for saving esports. Guys, we're going to be going into game number one momentarily here. Uh, just like the round of 32, the winner of this first set will go to the winner's match, the loser, the loser. So nobody's going to be eliminated at least until, um, I guess, the round of four. I guess that's how this works. The, the round, round of four? The uh, fourth best of three. No, yes, wait, yes. yes, that's true. I've been doing this for six years, like, and I was like, now when will we actually eliminate the first guy? Uh, oh my god, TY and Alive are gone. And those that's our first match. That's, so that's a kind problem. Of extra funny. Yeah, that um, doesn't normally happen. Yeah. Anyways, uh, it is a TBT to start out with. A tip a tip. Who do you think gets out of this group, by the way? I'm going to put you right on the spot. Who gets out? Top two. TY stats. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. And I'll still say it. TY and stats. That's because we're best friends. Yeah! yeah! We always share for the same guy. Yeah, we always have the same opinion on everything. <laughs> we're interchangeable. Um, but yeah, I mean, Alive is really good. He didn't look that good in his group, though, to be honest. Uh, it was a really yeah. tough road for him. Especially his TVP was looking a little bit weak. Almost Myungshik taking him out. Classic, of course, taking him out as well. But, uh, you know, the TY is like a monster in TVT. Always has been. Like, to beat TY in TVT, you got to be the guy. Like, he took out Maru 4-3 in WSG. Bion took him out of BlizzCon. I think that was the only guy that could have taken him out there. Well, here's like, the thing, too. His TVT is always top tier. You say you got to be the guy if you're going to be TY, but TY is the guy. And is there really more than one, the guy? I think it would be called the guys then. It would is be. this a battle of the guys or the is the live versus the guy? The old guys club? <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, no, his it's, it's TVT is magnificent. The thing is, Alive's is really, really good. Alive is like killing it in online cups. He's beaten Innovation recently in a big TBT series. Yeah. he uh, Alive is very, very good TBT, but I look at Alive's style, and I look at the way that TY's style, and I think that TY is going to beat him for sure. Like, I really do feel that way. This guy is just brainier than other Terrans, and if you are going to actually beat uh, TY, I feel like you've got to... You gotta be like beyond our innovation, in my opinion. You gotta have like such mechanics. You have to have such micro and such quick, decisive play to take him out because he's gonna out strategize you most likely. He's just this is like the smartest Terran that there is. Yeah, well, with, with Ty especially, he he will get so late and keep out positioning, doing damage, keep out positioning and doing yeah. damage. Um, I wouldn't say obviously his control is top tier, but I don't think of his control initially as much as I Absolutely, do just yeah. Uh, you know. Tactically, on a pretty large sense, how he ends up hitting certain spots on the map. Uh -huh. um, we've seen him completely go around other players, get behind, uh, and do a ton of damage. I, I think it's going to be tough for Alive. Now, Alive had a really bumpy group in the round of 32. Yeah, he did. Um, and he did redeem himself. He was one of the two survivors. In fact, yeah. the last player. was He the, He was the last player, right? He was the last player. the round of 16. Now... Obviously, he knows that was a bumpy day. He might be able to play a better time this time around, but this is a, no easy opponent. Ty yeah. is pretty scary, and the rest of these players in this group are scary as well. Yeah, it, like it's alive is a weird case because he's been one of the top players for a long time, and he definitely had a down era of a few years where he wasn't really considered a top player during the Kespa times. But he's like kind of back. Like overall online, he's one of the killers right now that just like wipes out everybody in all the online cups. But you're definitely right. Like, he had such an off night in his group. Truthfully, Scarlet should have beaten him. She should have probably advanced. You know, like, she I think made a couple was... mistakes at when she was way far ahead, and he clawed his way back in. So kudos to him. But, like, 
this is like his, he, he's a cat with one life left, basically. He's, you know what I mean? I, I do agree with what you're saying where Scarlett should have beaten him. Yeah. Um, Scarlett seemed like she was playing better, but then she yeah. made one or two mistakes. Yeah. I mean, Alive obviously wins fair and square there, but he's got to do it again here. And I feel like Alive, had that been on a different day, or a different time even in the day, that round of 3-2 day, he might not have made it. Yeah. Uh, it was super close, and this group is no easier than that round of 32 group. So this is a tall order, but who knows? We've had players that keep surprising us. Sometimes they end up in the finals regardless. Mm -hmm. Anyways, guys, get out there. Tell your friends to join us. This is our first best of three tonight. TY versus Alive in the GSL. In the bottom left, in the blue. TY. <laughs> and his opponent here in the upper right in the red. You never know. You never know how fast it's going to be, you know, when they're showing the face of the first guy. I'm like, do I start talking? Oh, yeah. Because if I start a thought, a big thought, and it goes the other one, Taste is going to cut me off no matter what. <laughs> I could be about to Your utter. job is hard, man. The, the universe could take over my body, and I'm about to tell everyone how to make unlimited energy, and Taste would be like, ah, yeah, yeah, the guy in the bottom right. <laughs> He's in the red. This is the seventh time tonight I've said this. <laughs> it's if I had a nickel for every time I introed one of these players, yeah, especially some. I'd like be alive. a poor guy, but not as poor as everybody else in esports. Yeah. Our <laughs> uh, I tell you, someone that's not poor is this Ty fella. Yeah, two hundred k at WSG. Oh my God, crazy. Well. Yeah. So what, what have you been up to, Tasteless, since this is the early game of a TBT and they're both making a Reaper? Yeah, let's talk about that. Um, I've been to the doctor. Yeah. Uh, I went to the, uh, the third doctor uh, for my wrist. Yeah. And he was the first one to prescribe me some steroids. I've had a wrist injury, guys, from yeah. playing um, just too many games. I cannot play any StarCraft right now. So you want you want to be ripped to. while you play StarCraft? Yeah, now? that's is right. Now I'm, now I'm not going <laughs> to skip leg day and get really huge. But... Uh, I've been in pain, man. I took these like oral steroids or whatever for my my wrist, and like yeah, I, you guys should have seen uh, me before the show. I was actually I almost didn't cast. I was in so much pain. We had yeah. to get me to a pharmacy with something to uh, cool the lining of my stomach because I was suffering. Yeah, a little belly ache. I was yeah. having to like rub his back and stuff. That's right. Poor little guy. Put little ice cubes on my head. <laughs> Tell me it's gonna be okay. Oh, tassels. What did you do? Well, we, we had about a week off. What, what did you end yeah, up doing, Artosis? Yeah. I, I played the unreal amounts of StarCraft. Like that's that, and played with my daughter, and that was basically the only thing. Yeah, that that's I did. the dream. See. The uh, well, the new maps came out right, so it's always fun to play a new ladder season. Oh yeah. And uh, learn new maps, and I feel like this new map pool is just super fun. It's it's a super cool oh. set of maps. I don't know how it'll go balance wise, but it's like a lot of fresh ideas. You and I were talking a lot about how Brood War had so many maps that were like, oh, this is really interesting and fresh. That's what the StarCraft II map pool feels like right now. And the thing is, when it gets this crazy, you know there's going to be some wonky balance issues to get figured out. But it's really cool right now. Like, well, the maps are so different. I love that in StarCraft II, we started out with some very generic maps. Yeah. I guess they went a little bit into the risky zone, and then everybody was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Let's make some more standard maps. But then as time passes, we make all sorts of different kinds of maps now. And then we can learn more about how the game operates and yeah. see if there's a, you know, certain unit comps work differently on certain mm -hmm. maps. By the way, TY actually getting in here. Um, he knew that that Reaper, uh, Alive knew that Reaper was alive, but that has now actually done a full scout, seen literally every structure within Alive's base and is going to escape very nicely done. But back to what you were saying, Artosis. Um, yeah, I, I love that we're getting some of these maps that, hey, maybe they will cause a few issues here and yeah. there. Maybe we will have to tweak the game as far as balance goes or the map itself. But that's what makes RTS good, Yeah, is that we have a lot of different strategies that can be used on different kinds of maps. Yeah, and, and you know, some of these will get figured out. Like, I'm sure that there are, like Bill was saying, he's not really like in the map pool right now for Zerg. I can kind of feel why after playing for a little bit. Um, yeah. Definitely a few of the maps is like, well, Protoss just has three bases. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Like, but, you know, a lot of this will get figured out over time. And <laughs> the, the wider range of... Uh, of maps that you know we get to learn from it just kind of like expands what we know about the game and everything it's, I, I love it i love it we got the ravens coming out here now 
Yeah. I think we were talking about uh, this in our one of our previous casts, but Alive is, isn't he kind of the signature Raven guy? He does if you had like to think of somebody who, who gets Ravens in, in, uh, in this game in general a lot, he's always been doing that. But uh, we see both of them now going for, uh, the, in this case, uh, getting the rest of that out. And mm. they may be doing a little bit of pushing coming up here. For the time being, it does appear they're both uh, just continuing to power on two bases. We got TY with the command center on the way, although that hasn't been floated just yet. Mm. And uh, probably won't be for a little bit at least, making plenty of siege tanks at the moment. I, he, he, going back to Alive, by the way, like one of the things I always notice about him, he's very good at zoning things. He's always like it's always an interesting thing to see where he puts, for instance, a missile turret or a widow mine. Yeah, because he will set them in positions where he's expecting our. It's it's not just like the standard place, right? Like we all know the standard places to build everything. Where it's right. like, okay, you put the cannon here, or you, you put the spore here, you know, and it's like there you go, you, you, the banshee can't get you. It's been solved. Right? But like the way that he'll place a lot of stuff is different, where he's really trying to kind of zone things out of certain areas on the map and control space like that. So it's like, I don't know, that's just a cool thing well, about Well, you, you know what I, 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 is interesting about it is a lot of people would look at that and be like, oh, that's so random. Why does he put that there? Doesn't he, does he just think of making, let's say, a turret and just throw it wherever he, yeah. he can? And the funny uh, thing about that is it might look random, but actually it's not at all. Yeah. It's yeah. like really thought out. Yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, at this level of play that you see in GSL, especially round of 32 or round of 16, I mean, is what we're in now, everything is super planned. There's very little sloppiness going on. These guys are just so fast and so well-practiced. Uh, Raven coming up now. TY going to have to back up. There's that well-positioned Viking there. Does have to burn mana on one auto mm -hmm. turret there, uh, which is fine. But the second Raven down here at the bottom right, already zoned out there by those Marines. Mm -hmm. uh, although we do have a command center here in the center right now for Alive. Yeah. It's in that position. But yeah, the little Raven poke there didn't do that much damage. In case you're wondering why they even send the Ravens out like that, they have enough energy. Yeah. You might as well do something with it. The auto turrets, uh, they can actually do some significant harassment damage. Yeah. So, you know, it's okay to try something like that. It looks like everything's sitting here waiting for alive. TY can't get too, too much done here. Does throw well, a couple auto turrets See, down. now here's the one risk about uh, having the Raven come out. Yeah. The Raven, unlike the Medivac, is not a fast unit. Mm. As you can see, it's uh, comparable to the Viking, at least in speed. And the Viking is never a unit you think of in a high-speed chase. Yeah, you know, <laughs> generally <it's> not, no. <laughs> um, so the fact that they were, uh, that one Raven was taken out, that's a lot of gas lost. Uh, mm. It does look like this uh, has now activated the push for Alive. He's going to come out here, try to get some position. It looks like just outside or maybe even a little bit in front of that watchtower mm. there that TY has in the center left part of the map. And we see that coming forward here now as the Cyclone's being driven back. Yeah, this is exactly what Alive needs to do right now. The difference in their play this game was the faster third command for TY. So he kind of like is powering a bit harder. He's a little bit down in units at the moment. But with the layout of this map, he like I can't imagine Alive actually getting damage done. And this goes back to the styles I was talking about where I think TY just kind of it's TY greater than Alive as far as styles go. And you can kind of see it in this play. Like, he's just playing slightly more defensive, slightly yeah. more greedy. And that's good against Alive, who likes to stay on two base a little bit longer. Yeah, he certainly likes to power up. Uh, good scans back there, by the way, by TY. Had uh, Alive opted to try to do any kind of full-on drop and committed. I think Alive probably could have lost the game at that point in time, as that would have been completely annihilated. And some of the slightly greedier play from TY, since it, it did not and could not have gone exploited or punished there by Alive, that would have allowed TY to probably go back across the map and crush him. For the time being, however, Alive is still occupying the, the center of the map. It's not with a huge army. In yeah. fact, it could be wiped out because Alive is somewhat concerned about a possible counter drop into his own base and yeah. in some ways hoping that TY might do that instead and then Alive will be prepared in that sense. Um, well, he's going to have to be careful because this this, lo this little army out here, it's two tanks. Yeah. Uh, it, it can be gunned down if he's not ready. You're, you're very right about that. By the way, see, did you see that Widow Mine there? I didn't. Okay, it's, okay. Well, anyways, he has a Widow Mine in like a perfect location. Right? Like, it's not, I don't want to say perfect, but it's one of these zoning locations where it's like, Alive? this is somewhere, yeah. This is somewhere, T.Y., that you might fly out over this, and you would not expect this to be here, and this could screw you up. But that's kind of what I was talking about with that. But 
I really like the split of units for Alive, like you were talking about, where yeah. he has groups of units in his third base, he has his rallies to his natural, and he has some units in the main, while trying to do a light contain. And the thing is, you're right, he had to pull back. He is kind of pulled back a little bit here. Because, I mean, if TY crushes a piece of his army, TY's going to have a huge advantage. But TY, uh, Alive is trying to keep some semblance of map control here, trying to make it difficult for TY to get anything done. I gotta say, this has been a really clean game from Alive so far. Yeah. Um, we all know how scary TY gets as every passing minute of the game uh, gets closer and closer. But in fairness to Alive, look, even Alive pulling out before any real damage is done here from TY. TY still has been flying around the map trying to drop in here, and Alive has basically not had any of it. Mm. It's they're both kind of sealed up tight. Like this is, as you said, very clean game. Uh, no one can really do too much. They're in very similar places as far as economy, macro upgrades, and everything like that. So a lot of this is going to come down to their actual positioning against each other. Watching these two guys, I want to write some kind of art of war book for Terran versus Terran. Yeah. Or like proverbs of TVT, like knowing when to push is hard knowing when to pull back out and run away is even harder. Yeah. Because we've seen Alive do that already. Uh, oh, nice. There that is. <laughs> uh, now that was, oh, hold up, hold up. Okay. Definitely did not want to attack there. Alive did not. Uh, backing up here. This has Alive's army uh, up on the high ground. Now, Alive seems to at least be keeping some of TY's attention up at the north part of the map here while Alive's also expanding uh, in the center location just on his side. And that's making T.Y. unsure if he can fully push over here. I love this game that we're watching right now, Tasteless. Like, just watching, look at the mini-map, see where all the dots are of both colors, the way that they're moving their army back and forth, trying to gain position on each other. It's just such a, a beautiful sight to behold uh, between these two. But Alive, he's making a couple command centers out, trying to take this kind of forward fourth base. But that's an easier place for T.Y. to attack into. By the way, that Widow Mine went off and actually damaged three of those tanks, I yeah. believe. And it got a Viking before and a Marine, so like... Okay, hold up. He's sieging up. A few of those Marines shaved off there. Keep in mind, this command center nearing completion. Alive does want to maintain uh, this location as TY has not taken a fourth base of his own, what would be in the opposite corner of the map here where Alive is expanding. Yeah, this is a hard spot for Alive to actually hold on to, but he has a mega death drop actually moving out. Did you see that? Six medevacs full of Marines, which means that TY's push is much more likely to end up working out. Looks like the Raven has been gunned down. Not many Marines here to defend, but with this huge drop, oh as Artos was talking about up here, um, I don't know if TY is going to be in a good spot to defend this. Let's see, the Marines yeah. are now moving up. It seems like... Uh, he may have sensed this. Maybe he scanned it earlier. Well, he has those watchtowers, so he's, or rather, sensor towers. So he's going to get in here and actually stop this from killing off his third base. Okay, good and deflection. Yeah, I mean, this is a very strong defense here by TY to hold on there. He lost two SCVs and a few units. That doesn't matter at all. No, not at all. Uh, important to note, though, is that TY still has not taken that fourth base. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, obviously, he's going to have to take that fourth base uh, eventually, but that does mean he has most certainly a lot more muscle out here on the map, especially, as you can see, uh, he's already maxed out. Alive is still trying to catch up. Alive does have more locations to try to defend, and Alive has taken a fifth base. Very important that TY's next attack does enough damage. Okay, well, he does have that high ground advantage, which is kind of nice, but of course, the watchtower is down here for Alive. He has additional bases at the moment. This is kind of cool, trying to push in with the Liberators, utilizing the Siege Shanks to punish Marines that come in yeah, against it. Yeah, that's super smart. Yeah. Uh, way more Marines taken out there than the, what was worth the price of the Liberator. A small drop here from Alive. There are tanks in the back to try to hit this. A few more Marines coming up. That's going to be out of, of that drop over there in the upper left. Um, although it does appear that Alive's going to try to drop elsewhere. Mm. And Alive actually looping around. We could end up with a base trade scenario. Yeah, this is a very strong move by Alive. Well, he's just kind of sieged up at that fourth base that TY is finding to be quite impenetrable right now. He's moving around with a huge group of units, trying to get position on this third base. SCV's being pulled there for a moment. Now, keep in mind, with less bases here for TY, forcing this to lift off would be huge. All that Alive would have to do is stay alive, <laughs> no pun intended, stay alive a little bit longer uh, and muster up enough resources to remake more of this army. And TY could be in a checkmate position, but TY now diving in. 
going around to this base here in the back. He may try to gun down the orbital. Yeah, he's going to be able to get that orbital pretty easily here. His 3-3 about to finish as well. So those Marines are absolutely deadly. The thing is, Alive does have another couple command centers, including that fourth base in the center of the map. Command center goes down. Pressure now on the CC over here. An isolated command center to the bottom right. Meanwhile, Alive trying to push in with a superior tank count. Not many Marines here in the front to try to defend. Nice job taking out that drop. Alive is now pushing closer over to the production facilities. I don't, I'm not sure there's enough uh, yeah. sophistication with this army alive. of Alive to push any further. Yeah, like you can just fly over here with your Vikings land on top of them if they want to stay siege. Otherwise, they have to run. And you see they are, in fact, running right now. The Vikings coming over and making sure that it's cleaned out. In the meantime, though, that is a lot of SCVs that were killed off uh, by TY. You know he's what? He's kind of stabilized, and he's got a much bigger army. Yeah, I think TY is going to win this. He just has way more of an army. Uh, Alive actually has less of an army and less resources, and especially with Alive losing those tanks, that'll give TY the muscle to continue to come forward and crush through. We have a big Marine push coming up. I think TY might have to back up. The uh, siege tank arc is pretty solid. Mm, Keep in mind, does he not know about this base? Yeah, I think he doesn't actually I think he know just about never it. Scanned. I think yeah. he's assuming this game is tighter economically than it is. Yeah. Where the only I thing Alive right. has going for him is a bunch of bases that are mining. <laughs> yeah, if he knew, he could put like one C chain up there or drop one Marine behind it to yeah. stop mine. Like, there's a million things he could do. But I'm uh, just going to attack into this fourth base since there's almost nothing left here for uh, Alive in this position. So, gets another base killed off. And right now, TY has to feel like he's almost got this game in the bag. A few scans here from Alive. Uh, of course, it's probably a little bit difficult for these two sides to realize what the supply difference is because it's massive. Mm. It's 121 to 200. Um, however, Alive is still pushing in over here. Let's see if there are enough necessary tools for uh, TY to hold this attack off. It looks like there should be, but he's not stimming forward here. This command center goes down. Uh, and he'll take out this other command center. That is Alive's last real mining base at this point, and Alive losing all the siege tanks as well. This is just about GG at this point. TY is just kind of outmaneuvered Alive. Yeah, uh, I basically think Alive's out of the game now. TY played a much tighter game on three bases, but picked his fights much more wisely. Yeah. Alive managed to get in there and do some damage, but he was actually bleeding out a lot of Marines and medevacs and tanks. And when it was all said and done, a few very smart attacks here from TY while keeping all of his pieces together. That will probably be how we look back on this game and decide that he was the victor. Uh, stimming in right now and killing off a few of those Vikings. So a little bit of sloppiness coming out of TY still. Has to be careful to finish this off in the correct way. Uh, and... You know, the thing is, he should be able to, to do so. Having three times that army supply, having that many siege tanks and marines, he's he's just whittled alive down too many times at this point. We see a rotation now for TY. I, I, by the way, we need to give kudos to TY here. He played very safe. After he did all that damage, yeah. he just backed up. Yeah. Um, you did not need to go for the kill move. This whole game is Alive's problem, guys. Yes, yes. It's actually Alive is drowning and... TY has managed to get onto the life raft. Mm. Um, and if, if Alive can't fight back on that life raft as well, there's nothing that he can do. Uh, and every time that uh, Alive attacks in with these small armies like this, if he doesn't do tremendous amounts of damage like that, it's going to be GG. Yeah. This so, is, uh, this was a, a I, I feel like this game perfectly underlines what I was talking about, about their styles against each other. We saw the quicker third command from TY, kind of the more positional play. The thing is, Alive is a very good TBT player. And, I mean, hell, he might even win the series. Who knows? But right. when you, if you play like kind of the slightly slower game, the slightly more cost-efficient play that we saw from TY, right? He's at, he's making sure that he has a Viking lead. He's not taking the center fourth base. He's just, get, he gets the army where he can outposition you a little bit, uses the Liberators to push in, and just kind of defends what else you're trying to attack, where, wherever else you're trying to attack him. I mean, I, I feel like his style is just so strong against someone like Alive. When you look at TBT, because we talk about that matchup being so important with the positional play, a lot of times you'd assume if you got more bases up early on and kind of had some decent defense, you should win every time, but... Mm. Um, you know, with TY actually having more and even staying patient on those three bases yeah. and then coming in and slamming these specific locations he, and moving back out unscathed, 
eventually alive completely burnt out. Wow. And those are two incredibly different play styles. Incredibly It looks different. like Marine Tank, but if you look at the Econ balance versus uh, types of attacks, I think TY was clearly the superior Terran. Mm -hmm. um, his at least in that game, possibly in the series if it keeps up. His position on play with units like Siege Tanks is really kind of second to none. He, he's just a, a fantastic human at TBT. All right, guys, let's get ready. We are now moving in to game number two, TY versus Alive. A fight to move on to the winner's match in tonight's GSL Code S. In the upper left, in the blue. TY. In the bottom right, in the red. Alive. All right, tasteless. So a different map, for sure, than Daybreak. Daybreak, uh, like, this map, you you got to be a little bit more careful about some things. It can get cut in half very easily, get that high ground and whatnot. Um, it's a little bit shorter to yeah. actually move across. Uh, there's some really powerful, like, ledges that you can kind of siege up and push in towards someone's expansion. So we might see a little bit of a, a faster game out of TY here. I'd say, but double gas here from Alive to open up. So it looks like he wants to go for some early tech. This map, uh, this map can be frustrating in, in, in TBT and can actually get out of control pretty quick because you do end up, kind of as you were saying, especially with the top and, and bottom, um, top center, top bottom expansions here, mm. gets really tricky covering that. You can attack out and move back really quickly. Yeah, it's quite true indeed. And, uh, you know, it, there are a lot of places you can fly drop ships where if you don't have any air spotters there, you don't even see it, like, over that third base area. Yeah, so. it's, it's a map that isn't that big to begin with, but mm. actually gets even smaller when you look at how many locations there are where you can't even have anything on the ground yeah. on the edges here. Yeah, that's that's actually very true when you talk about it like that. Like, there is a huge amount of dead space on the map. Like if we cut all that out, it's, like, kind of pretty the way it looks. Excellent. But, uh, <laughs> I like that pose. <laughs> if, if you cut all that out, this map is actually very, very small overall. Like places that you can actually go to that aren't just terrain to fly over. And it, I, what I like about that... Oh, hey, look, it's Mr. Che and the Marine. And that's right. The Marine, a legendary StarCraft 1 player, now commentator of many different games. Yeah, he's been a commentator for a long time. Yeah, he has. Long, long ago when we were just basically... So Baba nerds. Yeah. We were younger. We were watching StarCraft 1 from our homes back in the States. Mm -hmm. We'd see people commentating. We would see him casting. So yeah, that's and, cool to have playing, him down here. And playing at the beginning as well. That's uh, true, yeah. He was the Marine and a, a very top-level Terran player for sure in the very early days. Mr. Che was actually a Zerg pro gamer, by the way, guys. I don't know if you guys knew that. I bet a lot of people didn't, yeah. actually. Why are they together? That's the real question. So they play different races. How could they possibly be friends? <laughs> I actually don't know anything, so I can I can do the the crazy uh, conspiracy theory. But hey, he works at OGN. What is he doing here? Well, he's he's not allowed to be in another game studio. <laughs> By the way, he actually gunned down the SCB making over there. I mean, uh, this sick. is really bad for Alive. I think Alive. We may see the same kind of day from Alive as we saw in the uh, earlier round. Mm. Ooh. Boom! Get wrecked. Yeah, the double Reaper. One of them falls right there. But the fact that this single Reaper has done this much damage. You kidding me? That Four SCB. SCBs stalling out the command center as well. SCB didn't get moved off the depot. It had to hang on with its little claws while it was making it. <laughs> Grab onto some foundation. Oh. Oh. It's like someone opened the airlock. He's <laughs> barely. He's got a belt tied around a pole <laughs> while he's making the depot. What is that movie? Twister or whatever? Oh, where God. Yeah. He's like, oh, it. my God. It's a it's an F5 uh, tornado or hurricane or whatever he was calling yeah. it. And then he's like, Here, here's what I'll do. I'll take a belt and tie it to a pipe underground. Yeah. The whole house is ripped off, ripped apart, I should say. That's some good pipe work right there. That's some there. good piping. Yeah. You know what happens if you and me do that when a tornado comes is take our belts and tie it to a pipe as we just fly off. Yeah. Well, you got that tasteless fashion belt from 1982 or something, so like <laughs> that would just break and you'd fly yeah, in the sky. This leather's not good anymore. I'm like, look, he was finally a flying man before tasteless, he died. you don't have to wear everything that's vintage. <laughs> Okay, a little bit of drop harassment coming in from Alive, sieging that tank up. SCV's starting to get pulled, a Viking coming in as well. 
Looks like there is going to be enough here to clean this up, though. Yeah, nicely that done. I mean, that, that was a cool attempt by Alive, but an attack like that, uh, losing a medevac, tanks, uh, the Marines, uh, it's more forgivable to lose the Marines, mm. but the tank and the medevac especially, that's going to give him a lot less um, opportunity later on. Yeah, TY is up five SCVs right now. They've got kind of similar armies, and he's got that third command on the way. I guess Alive has started his as well. It's just a little bit behind, but... So far, I really like how TY has kind of deflected everything, got a ton of value out of a single Reaper. Looking pretty good. Well, he's going to try to come in again. Uh, this actually could go poorly again here for Alive. Okay, he is going to pull out in time. That was cute. He was, like, daring him to drop more out there. Yeah, yeah. It, it was. He's like, hey, throw down that auto turret. It's like, no, I'm not going to waste that mana. mana sorry. Uh, good job by Alive to actually turn around there. If he had lost that, it would have gotten much worse. Now, with the medevacs being slowed down, he drops the Marines, chases them back, chases them back, excuse me, and will probably pick back up and head home. Yeah, not too much more to do right there, but uh, with TY flying around with that, that's some good harassment units. So uh, might even be able to force a, well, slow this down, not force a cancel. If you force a cancel in that third he just with takes two flying out the units, I'm like, what? Slowly shoots auto turrets down there until eventually <laughs> the command center is dead. He never scouted that. How about that? Yeah, he flew right over it. Looks like uh, Alive kind of waiting and watching for this. Let's keep in mind that uh, Alive, or rather TY, actually did this earlier uh, and lost the Raven in the yeah. first game we had. Yeah. He had two Ravens out that game, and in fact, uh -oh. he has two here as well. Coming into the natural, throwing one down. Going to delay that depot and kill off a few SCVs as well. It's There's smart. Wow, the SCVs can't SCVs. really run away, which is a two shot. Some, so. Yeah, it's so fast. It, it's a smart move. And like we said before, the uh, the Raven has enough energy, you might as well use it. But you, you do want to keep in mind that the more you do a strat like that, the more Terrans will just be ready for it and yeah. kill your Raven. Yeah. So that seems to be something you could try for a little bit, but I think if everybody's copying what they're seeing in GSL here and going back on the ladder, mm -hmm. that's going to last like two days, guys. <laughs> and then you're going to be flying around with your Raven because you might have checked the VODs out late. There's going to be a Viking there, and you're going to be like, well, he only did that because he's so stupid that he doesn't know how to play the game, and he put his Viking there for oh, no man. reason he should have known, and it's like, well, mm. you know. If he has, if he has a Viking TY does it, everybody away. starts to do it <laughs> right away. So. Well, he is TY. Yeah. These auto turrets are so badass. Look at that. Yeah. Kills like three Marines and an SCV right there. Still continuing with this harassment, doing well, a great job. You know, on this map, there are areas where you can fly over, and most of the ground units can't hit you from down there. Mm. But uh, unfortunately, if the Raven isn't in a good spot, it can be killed off. It's not a unit that has an easy escape. Well, the Vikings fly right in there and take it down. So uh, now TY knows. Okay, one of them died. May as well run away with the other one. I still think it was pretty worth it, those two Ravens being out. They did some great harassment. And both of them kind of just getting into their third bases now, Tasteless. Yeah. We uh, have somewhat of a passive game. I guess we had some poking coming in here, mm. some failed drops, at least from Alive. I'd say TY overall playing a little bit of a better game, uh, and that is reflecting just slightly in the supply lead. But certainly when the big attacks do start to happen here in the middle of the map, if TY is not set up correctly and does not control correctly, uh, the game definitely could uh, tip back into Alive's favor. Yeah, like, even if you have a bit of an edge, there's so much defender's advantage inherent in siege tanks that things can go very wrong. You have to, like, put in full effort until the game is dead, you know, until... Well, I mean, I guess the game is always dead since 2001, but, uh, <laughs> you know, until until the game is really right. closed up. How many more years are we just going to keep doing GSL? People are like, I think this game's dead. I'm like, guys, dude, we're going to be guys. doing StarCraft 4 one day. Yeah, and StarCraft 4 is dead. That franchise is eventually going to go yeah. away. I'm like, guys. By then, it's going to be like 2051, and like yeah. people are actually like, hey, listen. We will be there, two old masters. Have had to clone us. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be half clone, half cyborgs. Oh, man. But then as I get old, I come in and harvest the organs of my clone. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I only really care about me, and the other me is like looking up scared. As <laughs> I'm like, a horrible person. I'm like, I need your heart. This is it. <laughs> Say goodbye, Artosis too. You drank enough water while you were alive. Your kidneys are good. Now give them to me. <laughs> <laughs> you will die so that I may live. <laughs> I am the original. <laughs> <sighs> well, uh, nobody's uh, really jumping on a third base just yet here, and I think... I, I'm sorry, a fourth base. And you got to ask the question, why Why would you necessarily jump at a fourth base right away? That's mm. where the pushing gets really easy, especially in TVT. 
When you take a fourth base, you better know hmm. uh, that you can hold it. And if you look at the supply difference here, Ty has just suddenly exponentially gotten a lead. Yeah, uh, well, he, he had that. Alive. He had that early advantage, right? And from <laughs> right. there, he just kind of gets to decide whatever he wants to do. Whereas, as you were saying before, it's like kind of gets into a live's court. If if you get an advantage like that. Then Alive has to figure out what to do. And Alive actually decided to make a fourth command center. So he's just going to have to turtle. TY has complete control of the map at this point. Yeah, and it's going to be up to Alive to weather the storm. Now, on this map, it's a little bit easier to defend from multiple locations, at least at the second and the third. Your main not that droppable. I guess you can get in there and do it. It's a little bit trickier, though, on this map. Mm. So um, I, I think Alive should have better chances of holding on here. But it does seem yeah. like TY actually wants to set up a hard contain. Uh, outside this location, making turrets now. Yeah. He's got the high ground. He's got enough Vikings. He can always see ahead. I think this is a beautiful play. I uh, agree. Because this is, like, the, don't forget, guys, back in, like, uh, Heart of the Swarm, this was the map that broke Mech against Zerg because, it, like, if you have siege tanks sieged up, you just you can't move around on this map at all. Yeah. And if he sets up a hard contain with turrets and whatnot, you're not going to break out of this with Marines. That's just never going to happen. Note the spread here as well. He's eating these tanks out in a nice line so that they're uh, not stacked up enough that splash damage can all come on top of them at once. Yeah. Liberator's trying to poke in, but I think this is an easy task to juggle here for TY. You know, the one really good thing for Alive is that he made a better air force. So having the Vikings gives him a little bit of maneuverability in trying to push into this. Yeah. But with that sensor tower there, that's all that uh, TY had to do to make sure he always knows when the siege tanks are moving forward. He just kind of watches that. He's like, okay, you might have a little bit more vision with those Vikings, but I can outmaneuver you here. Now, TY's been maxed for a little while, so let's see what's actually back at home to help defend this. This one siege tank is going to go down, but not before doing a decent amount of damage over there. Oh, interrupted drop! Ooh, one of the medevacs looks like it'll get away for the time being. Uh, just barely out of range of that turret there. He will be able to unload that, so this is a little bit of extra damage. Um, for Alive that's uh, being dealt up here to TY. At the same time, though, TY has still got a good control, got decent uh, dominion over this high ground area that Alive can't really push up. And you got to think, after an attack like that, I would uh, I would assume that TY would then come down and reinforce this location. Uh, yeah. Although Alive is actually expanding down here. Now, this is a mistake. Yeah, that's this is this is pretty bad. A little bit surprising, those siege tanks on the high ground. A lot of these units going to be plastered by those siege tank shots, but he did force TY at least to back up with enough that uh, Alive is like kind of wedging himself up this ramp. Yeah, he he, he is. He's getting there. If he um, was if, if he, he was a type of French fry, he'd be a potato wedge right now. Uh, for He's, certain. He would not be a curly fry. No, uh, TY is a oh! curly fry. He is crushing this potato wedge at the moment. He is uh, also curly fries are generally better than potato wedges, yeah, exactly. dare I say. So I think I think we're getting this, this point across in every possible way. Look, I mean, he actually took out the command center, so even though this position that Alive managed to climb up into was pretty impressive, he lost the building that made the whole thing worthwhile. <laughs> he yeah. doesn't have the command center, he can't yeah. mine from here. The thing um, is, holding the high ground is very important. He can float command center over, and he is doing that with his look main at his base. Control. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. See that kiting and targeting there by TY, guys? Mm. You kids taking notes? <laughs> that was a really good way to exchange units. Um, now Alive is trying to expand up here to the upper right. You can see he has enough SCVs that he has to long distance mine, or it's mm. not optimal. Man, uh, TY just kind of keeping control, taking more and more bases during all this. He's got right. a great amount of sensor towers. Look at all those sensor towers that he has. Just always has a lot in fantastic positions. Alive, look at that. Nothing is left there. He's actually moved most of his army way back and is pushing up towards that new fourth. Well, Alive is not giving up here. Uh, TY has actually expanded with that base of the upper right. That may be a good point for him to just start hammering on mm -hmm. his opponent since they are in such close proximity. A nice drop though over here by Alive. This is going to deny this. Meanwhile, uh, unloading Marines on top of those tanks, but with so many Vikings, they do gun that down. But are the tanks softening up from the splash damage they dealt to themselves? Yeah, it looks like he'll bust through quite a few of them, and with that, he retakes the high ground completely, yeah. coming in from a fantastic angle. Like, Alive was ready for attacks from the top, not from the side there. So another strong move from TY, who's just kind of got an edge in this game. Alive here at the north, moving through the blind spot on the mini-map, uh, in top center, hopefully to, uh, for his sake, to drop into the main. But already, TY is there! 
Uh, TY just really showing his strengths in this TBT match. Alive floundering right now. The, there's just every move he does. Look at this. He's like, all right, now I'll liberate her. Oh, no, I won't do anything. Yeah, he's getting shut down everywhere. He might. Oh, he's going to land, land on these siege tanks. Oh, I'm unsieging him. Yeah, well, at least these tanks will be taken out, but yeah. I don't know if that's going to be enough for Alive well, to bounce back in a game like this. Now the air army is so fantastically in TY's favor yeah. that like you have to use non-stop scans almost as Alive to see where the siege tanks are and, and, and get an, that vision. a resource deficit here. Yeah. Yeah, with that being said, with that upper base that's been eliminated there for TY, he is going to re-expand to the center left, but TY with a lot more momentum here. Uh, Alive is doing a good job punching up here uh, from his position, but it, it's tough. If, if this center right base for TY, uh, or excuse me, for Alive is destroyed by TY, I don't think Alive can play in this game for much longer. Yeah, Alive is like, he, the thing is he is still, and he still Ooh, has a decent size. He's doing army. it. Oh, yeah, that's a good move. But this is, he's in a very tough spot with all these sensor towers and just kind of like TY having an advantage in a lot of ways. Alive, he needs to make some miracles happen, basically. He's bringing the rest of these Marines down here. He does clean up that small harass there uh, by Alive. Alive now with the center right, the upper right, and the bottom center. Look at the explosive energy mm. that Alive has on this map. Yeah, no, he's he's really trying to punch holes in all over the place yeah. right now, and he's made a couple good moves. But I still look at the positioning, and look how spread out that Alive is right now with his low army supply. Yeah. How do you possibly hold on to all these areas? You can't. As soon as TY brings his forces to bear anywhere, we are going to see Alive buckle. We and we may see TY move from the upper right all the way, hugging the right side of the mini-map, eliminating mm. bases one by one. I think Alive's done a decent job keeping TY on his feet, though. Yeah, yeah. He's threatening base trades and stuff, so that's forcing TY to kind of stay back and stay a little bit more passive. But look, TY is ready to meet him at any time. He's just yeah. he's got more here. Oh, oh no. coming through though. <laughs> Every tank is precious, especially at this phase of a TVT. Mm -hmm. Losing those tanks gives you a lot more muscle to break. Um, sieged positions there for Alive. TY looks like he may be pushing through here all the way now. Uh, just taking advantage of this opportunity that landed in his lap here by some miscalculation from Alive. Uh, Alive still trying to outmaneuver somehow, some way with this small army, but he's not going to be able to do a whole lot. Eventually, TY can just surround it and attack, move into it. Like, it's just, it doesn't have that critical mass to kill anything that comes at it. Alive still on the map, though. His army a little bit ragtag. If he can, if he ends up losing this army, I think the game will end. Mm -hmm. uh, even though he has so many command centers all over the map. And by the way, the longer he keeps those up, the more resources he sucks up. He can restabilize. But if he yeah. loses this army um, and doesn't trade like way more in his favor, he's probably going to lose. Yeah, and I think that's what we're about to see. Like, TY can just kind of bulldozer in here. He's forcing everything back with these Liberators. Tanks have to unsiege, move back. Up comes TY with his own tanks. And then rinse and repeat. The Liberators coming up once again. Yep, he can just slowly inch in here with the two Liberators. Or actually, it's a little bit more than that, it looks like. Like three, maybe. Got, yeah, coming in now. Um, he's going to target down this command center. The SCDs are mining. He picks up at the last second to avoid more siege tank splash damage. With Liberator position, the tanks begin to edge forward. Is this going to be enough? Alive needs to stop this now. This was a good stim in by Alive when those siege tanks went unseaged. He might be able to break through this little chunk of army, but no. More reinforcements from TY. Oh, uh, that's going to be it. Yeah, that's going to be GG. Yep. He can now come all the way through here. He doesn't even necessarily have to destroy the expansions in the upper right. He can actually just go into the main and destroy the production facilities. Um, GG, TY. Tonight, so far, in that best of three, clearly the better player. Yeah. And the thing is, I don't think he's as much a better player as it looks like in this game against Alive. I think he's a better player than Alive, but yeah, stylistically, he has the edge against the way that Alive likes to play TBT. TY, it's like rock, paper, scissors almost in the way that they play, and TY's style of TBT is really hard for Alive to deal with. And uh, even though Alive's offense is pretty good, TY's defense is much better. He just stays back. There were several points in both of those games where TY tries to come out, and, um, or rather, excuse me, Alive tries to come out, tries to drop somewhere, and TY is completely ready. He takes out the tank, the medevac, the Marines inside, and sometimes doesn't lose anything at all. Yeah. Very, very well done. Great defensive plays by TY. And
I mean, that's that's one opponent down for him. He goes into that winner's match where he'll meet either Buell or Stats, and I kind of feel like he's favored against both of them just slightly. We are going to go to a short break. When we come back, our second best of three in tonight's GSL.